at least that is what I can say about this day. And in order to relax a bit, I am revisiting one of my old favorites. This is Mad Games Tycoon. And it was part of a rather big tycoon craze on Steam. That was basically YouTubers Life, Mad Games Tycoon, and a couple of other games. And I played these games rather a lot, but I never actually streamed that much of them. So I intended that we're actually going to do that. And uh, we are going to play as a brand new software company. You have never heard of this one before. It's Ubisoft or Ubisoft, more like it. I pronounced it a bit wrong there. Uh, we're gonna be based in France because, I mean, there are really no software companies worth speaking about in France. So, all we have to do now is basically choose our play name and we're gonna let it be Jonathan. So, when it comes to game settings, we're gonna unlock all the features. And the reason we're doing that is because the game will be significantly easier since you're not locked behind uh, certain walls. So, here we go and everything seems to be set. And I'm going to give myself basically a master's degree in programming. And I'm going to be good at... Let's see here, what can we be good at? I mean, we could be good at cutscenes, of course. And we could also be good at... I mean, picking something here is a bit tricky. But I think we're going to have... The special feature will be the joystick driver. And our special genre will be... I would really like to be a RPG RPG guy, but I think actually my special genre is going to be arcade. So, let's just go with that standard and begin in the 1980s on normal difficulty. And that should hopefully be... And welcome to Mad Games Tycoon initially. Yeah, I think I... Let's see here. Yeah, uh, I done it all correctly, so... We're not going to automatically place objects, uh, but we are going to get the first room here, which is going to be a development center. And as you can see, the prices really vary, but for now we can't really uh, afford that much. So we're going to place down two desks here, and we're going to get it at least one cabinet if we can if we can and we are also going to put down some other things I'm just gonna find them um, like these pin boards where, so we can organize our stuff and a fan so the room is more friendly and of course a fire extinguisher and a first aid cabinet because we need to consider employee safety. Now, the second thing we are, go we are gonna put, put down is a research room, and it's going to be right next to it. We're basically just in a garage right now, so um, let's put down one desk here and one desk here. I'm basically just go going to set up the office before I do anything else. And then we need to get our extinguisher, first aid cabinet, and where's the ceiling fan? There we go. And we're also going to get ourselves a water cooler so that our employees can get a easy drink. So the first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to research a topic and uh, we could actually report rabbits but we're, for, at first we're going to check what kind of games we can actually make. We have dreams, we have food and we have sheep. So I think we're going to make a food based game um, and I don't really know what kind of game to make but I'm considering an arcade game 
aimed at teenagers and yeah it's going to be let's just call it food fight and our main genre is going to be arcade now skill games are unpopular and puzzle games are popular but i don't really feel like making a puzzle game so that'll have to be it and we're not even using an engine for this one we're basically just making a game straight out of the box for the personal computer uh actually it, let's see how much a dev kit for the it's awfully expensive i mean the, the market share value for the Qatari 2600 is good uh, but i think we're just gonna get one for the apple 2 and we'll de develop the game for computers and food teenagers food fight main genre is arcade no engine did i forget anything no i did not forget anything so personal computer an apple 2 and these ones are always a bit tricky i mean an arcade game should focus more on the graphics and most likely we should also focus a bit more on game length so people get more for their credits um yeah maybe a bit more on game length and less on there and of course the game should have a bit more atmosphere so people remember the game an arcade is simple and it should not be it should not be a tricky game to play by any stretch of the imagination. So, I think that's that's the best part. So, I think we should focus basically mainly on graphics. And basically just steal points from everything else. And, yeah, there we go. As for languages, I mean, I don't really know how much extra it costs to get languages but i don't think that's actually a main concern right now so yeah let's make that game let's make food fight and while we're making that we could get ourselves a quality assurance room and we don't have enough money for that crap uh, we'll just have to speed up everything and start programming food fight and hope we don't encounter too many bugs because bugs can really sink our game uh, in fact I think that we might actually get a smaller quality assurance room but I don't think I can even afford a desk so I think we're gonna have to accept that this game is gonna have bugs Yes, we publish it now. We find a publisher. Blue Ocean gives us a good market share and they have decent market strength. Right now, well, Ubisoft, uh, for some reason, is a publisher. We can publish it ourselves, basically, but we get a lesser less share and their market share is aimed towards the arcade. So I'm actually prepared to go with Blue Ocean for this one. We're going out of the house, basically. So, should have spent more time, this game has strong gameplay weaknesses, they really should have spent more time on this. Controls are lousy, should have spent more time on this. So, it's not really the best game we could have done, but, I mean, the scores aren't bad. At least not for the time. So, uh, we are going to get a drawing background job there so we get a bunch of extra cash and hopefully we can at least get the money back from a food fight and so we did so basically we are now earning money from food fight and we can research the full color support for from the research room and then we can also get ourselves a quality assurance office Let's just make it 4x4 four four and get a desk in there. Or rather, two desks. 
There we go. And I think it's time for me to expand my team. Hire more staff. And we are good at programming. That means we should have someone in game design to help us out. So you can you can sit there. And I basically turned on that the employees will be uh, working independently. So managing our employee level is going to be uh, tricky. Uh, I also consider making ourselves an engine of our own. But we need a bit more capital for that, so... Okay, so video game consoles, we're not gonna make our own console, but we got about a 50k from that, so... It's not a bad, bad game by any stretch of the imagination, so... Let's optimize this one for puzzle games, because puzzle games seems to be trending. Of course, this means that we really should be focusing our engine on something else, but let's just make a puzzle game and let's just call it the puzzle engine. And give it all the features of the day, like four color support. Let's make profit sharing into 20%, because you want the profit sharing to be not a not so much that it deters people, but the initial cost should always be low because that that's not where you're gonna get your money from by licensing engines. Of course, you can you can choose to keep your engines for yourselves, but in the beginning there's absolutely no incentive for you to do that because um, basically. You earn a lot of money by your engines. So we're gonna develop a... Yeah, neither of those teams so sounds really nice. So let's find a... Let's just go puzzles, puzzles. And see if that works for us. We are not gonna participate in the games convention. So we are researching puzzles as a theme. So, uh, develop a game, retail, target audience. Yeah, it should be adult, basically. So, let's just, we'll choose puzzles and we'll choose a puzzle game. And let's call it Puzzle Collection, basically. It's it's not really shovelware, but it's as close to shovelware as we're gonna get. So, for the personal computer and the Apple. And, as you can see, our old settings are still here. But I think that for a puzzle game, we should prioritize gameplay and game length. So that people get the most out of their money. Same, a puzzle game doesn't really have that much of an atmosphere, it's more of a brain teaser. And of course it's gonna be a very deep game, but we have to make it a bit casual so people can get into it easily. Especially people who might not be into computers or anything like that, so... However, I want it to, I want it to look good, so... Let's raise the graphics to 50%. And let's see, more focus, a little bit more focus on gameplay. And full color support and PC speaker sound. We don't have enough money. Crap. I'm gonna borrow 50 from the bank, and hopefully that is going to get us what we need. Now, we have a quality assurance room that will hopefully allow us to <coughs> squish the bugs later on. So. Apparently making the game is... We do not want to publish it because we want to remove the bugs first. As you can see, we are, both of my employees is now moving to take out the bugs. And we're gonna find a publisher who likes puzzle games. And we can still cash in on the fact that puzzle games are popular. So Koei will be uh, our delivery for this game. Uh, game is average, genre fans can buy it safely, 
and apparently we scored good with graphics and genre in the trend so uh, apparently could we also have a contract for creating graphics so i think we can safely do that and then we'll just repay the bank so we don't have to uh, worry about interest and everything like that uh, right now we have the game has gone turned a profit which is really really nice and we might as well take another contact creating sound effects for iGames. games I would like to make a game that's good enough for people to really, really want to buy the engine. Uh, let's optimize the controls. Uh, write a story for them. And I want someone to go over and research some features for the next title. I'm actually kind of interesting in hiring someone who can handle graphics so we'll, we'll hire a graphics guy for that basically right now basically all my employees are pretty inexpensive we're doing pretty well with puzzle collection and someone has actually licensed the engine too. Meaning we might get dough rolling in pretty quick from it. We didn't get any of the Mad Games awards, but in this case that's just a good thing. Because with that game, I think that <coughs> the only thing we would have been eligible for is one of the bad ones. So let's focus on maybe a platformer game. Uh, at least that's my... So we earned 126,000 of that game. That's not bad. In fact, it's actually quite good. So... What we're doing now is that we are going to try and develop a platformer. And while you are still there, you might want to design a level. I think we might actually want to... Yeah. Turned out it was a pretty good idea to place two people in that room. Apparently this guy, meaning me, wasn't really all keen on doing the project work. So we got 27 from someone who basically used our engine. And let's research another feature, the joystick driver, so that our new engine will have a support for joystick control. As for dev kits, the Qatari is still very expensive, but then again, it has a decent market share. So I'm actually going to invest in that one. I mean, it has a market share of 22%. That's pretty damn good, if I'm going to be honest. So, we have a joystick driver on the way. And once that is done, we, we can design the new engine. So, let's develop a new engine and make it for platformers. And the features is gonna be basically everything you can wish for in a new engine. And the profit sharing for it will be 20%. That's good. Let's call it the Dream Engine. And meanwhile, I want someone to. I want something that's like. Agents, animals, anime, art, assassins. Yeah, let's make an assassins game. I mean, there's no way a French company called Ubisoft can't go wrong by making an assassins game, right? And we don't have a free development space. And we got another license for the puzzle engine.
The problem is I think we might actually have to borrow money again in order to make the, the new game. I don't really like that thought, but the problem is that right now platformers are unpopular. So it's gonna be a bit tricky getting it done. No, we still do not participate in that one. And we have a new feature actually that we can research. Of course, that means we'll have to upgrade our dream engine. Either that, or we simply make the game without. Ah, oh, crap, another. Let's see how much we can actually get in, into this game. Let's call the game Assassin's Promise, because, I mean, as you know, there's probably no game that even reminds us about it. Let's go Assassin's and make it a platformer and use the Dream Engine. I don't really care about the fact that our engine is almost already outdated. I want a game out for the Qatari that's already lost market share. The Apple II has so little market share, it's pre pretty much not even worth it at this point. Uh, but we're gonna develop for it at any rate, so... A platform is a pretty balanced game, so we'll just go with balance all across the board here. Maybe a bit more focus on atmosphere so people feel like they're under the black flag. And basically the game is supposed to have something for everyone. And the same is going to be with where our time is spent. Basically just make it as safe as possible. Now, the new features we've we uh, would have entered is lacking, but, ah crap, we don't have enough money. Uh, we'll borrow 50 and see if we can make the game, well, we can't make the game on 50, so we'll just borrow 100,000. <sighs> it's not really what I wanted, but, uh, and we can't really research some of the, ah oh, crap. We are gonna have less applicants as well. So we got a pr uh, profit from the puzzle engine, so we're gonna... I'm considering which one of these I really should get. I think we want to... Uh... Yeah, let's go with game balance and... Let's see, you can go to and basically program that thing. Because the quality assurance doesn't just fix the bugs, they do another very important thing. So once we have uh, researched this, we should probably uh, get them into the quality assurance office so that they can improve the gameplay and enable them to improve the game balance, and they'll be going in there. So now we have at least one guy in there, and I think... I think we should hire another uh, programmer, Giacomo Vocivac, and we'll place him down there. And there's a lot of bugs in that game, so we need to fix them up, and we didn't win any of on the game awards either, but we're, we're good. And I want to remove the bugs before we release this game. Two, one, and no bugs left. So, 
Let's... Platformers are still not really the game people want to play. Which is kind of interesting because they are a new thing, but we have a relation with Blue Ocean. So... The game isn't too bad, but could use improvement with 65, so... That could have been a lot worse. As long as we get our money back, I'm fine with it. Ah, crap. And of course an economic crisis, so new, no new contract work is going to appear either. Let's build a prototype for them, and it looks like Assassin's Promise is actually going to work out just fine. So, create special effects for that company and 40 realms have licensed the engine, that's nice. And debug the code. Uh, let's see here if we can't invest in a training room. It's basically... Let's see here. Training room. Training course in... Let's see here. Game design made, made easy. So now they're studying game design and... Basically the bank should have its money back. Meanwhile, I think that we should develop a new engine. Uh, let's optimize it for... I don't really know. We uh, we all doesn't have we haven't actually made an arcade game. So let's just make an arcade game with all these features. And just call it the Joust Engine. And if I have to explain why... Ah, crap, I forgot something. Uh, cancel the project. Uh, meaning we get most of our money back. Um, I forgot that we actually had another s stuff here that we could all actually use. So, Assassin's Promise made quite a bu bunch of cash. So, I think that uh, develop a game. We, we could develop, like, an adult game about dreams and it's it's still gonna be a platformer using the dream engine and we'll call it dream attack basically and let's just develop it for the personal computer which has the largest market share so we'll, we'll keep the costs down and basically just make it into a, a, another another game like that if you catch my drift so The funny thing is that absolutely no one is actually working on the game. There e oh, we got about 200,000 from people that had li just licensed our engine. So, it's, while it's not going terribly for us, it's going decently at least. And more people are licensing our engine, so... Uh, I want to improve gameplay, so please make sure we do that and we do not want to participate and we got more money from licensing our engine apparently people really enjoy using our engines which is nice and we'll research save game support And off we go. <sighs> Looks like we don't have enough people to actually work the all the departments at the same time. And I'm actually kind of keen on just keeping these people, trying to train them up to a reasonable level first.
Yeah, now you can go and you can improve the game dream attack. Hurry up. We need this game out on the market ASAP. I just realized that I might have actually made a, an arcade game using a platformer engine. Hopefully it still works. So research other, let's, let's research controls. And make sure we, ooh, 151. I mean, we're getting quite a lot from, you know, just. And you can start with removing the bugs. So far, so good. And I think we, we, I think we could actually release this game and find a publisher. Oh wait, it's a platformer. I actually was convinced that I was making an arcade game, but apparently not. So there aren't really anyone who releases platformers. Apparently, that was deemed unnecessary. So. Let's just release it with Blue Ocean again. Only buy if you're a hardcore fan. Well, it, it could be worse. It could be a lot better, of course, but it could also be a lot worse. So I'm going to make sure that we create an intro for these guys. I really like the effect that if, if a person leaves and like getting water or goes to the toilet or anything, the work actually decreases. So it's a pretty neat, nifty thing. Uh, so let's have another training course at the office about the joys of work. I don't really know if the computer decides who most needs the training. Uh, but it's kind of nifty to see that you can pretty much... Yeah, and let's research a poly polygon 3D render. Dream attack went with a loss, so that turned out to be a poor decision. But at least we hadn't actually taken out a bank loan for that one, so... Hurry up. So the next training course will be about a programming course, I think. And we'll, we'll see basically who, who needs it. Ooh, the Nintendo mess. I think we need a dev kit for that one. And the dev kits are fucking expensive. And that since it's a brand new console, it doesn't really have that much of a market share yet, but... And uh, let's see here. Let's just research that feature and be done with it. Or not really done with it, but you catch my drift. I want to have a new engine out soon, but let's just take on some work. We do not participate. Once we have that 16 color support, we could start uh, with the next engine. Uh, I think we should research a genre, basically the RPG. And we'll make an RPG for the PC and the Nintendo. Not even sure I, I pronounced that correctly, if I'm going to be honest, but... And in the meantime, we can actually have a game design made easy course for the staffers who are not otherwise occupied. If 
Apparently our engine is still viable and that's nice. So we are researching the RPG engine and uh, we should try about having a theme for it. Islands, Mafia, Mercenary, Monkeys, Movies. Pirates, plunder, demons, dating. Eroticism. No, we're not making an eroticism game. Let's make an historical RPG. So while you're researching that, we can develop the new engine. And optimize it for an RPG, and let's call it Gamla Engine. So, this one is going to give us a bit more profit sharing because it's going to be damned expensive to make. So, we're going to borrow 250 right off the bat. And hopefully that will also cover the cost of the game. But I don't think it will. Because we are going to have to, in order to use all the features, the game needs to take on a bigger scope, so we need to research B-plus games. And researching and making B-plus games are expensive, and I mean really expensive. Not as expensive as a AAA title, mind you, but expensive nonetheless. So they'll be working on that while... We didn't win anything, we didn't lose anything, that's nice. And we got some money from someone who had licensed our engine. That's nice. So, I will be playing until I've released this game. And once I know how it ended and everything like that. So, research others. I think we want to make sure we can actually boost the levels too, but I think we might actually have to take out a loan in order for this to be effective, so... Employees are complaining there are not enough toilets. We're in a garage. You can use my home toilet if you need to. Alright, so basically develop a new... Uh, development is done and we'll talk to the bank about borrowing another... Uh, another and more features and the target audience for this game should probably be adult. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, yeah, an RPG is best aimed at adults. Uh, we'll make it a historical game, an RPG, and just call it Stockholm. And it's gonna use the Gamla engine. And let's make it for the personal computer. Uh, the Nintendo have a decent market share, so we'll, we'll make it for that game as well. And... I think we should focus more on story. And we should also focus a hell of a lot more on atmosphere and game depth. And of course, make it for core gamers. As for graphics, I think I want to prioritize a bit more there, so... But sounds are also important. I think we want more gameplay than we want technology, so we'll make it like that. And let's release it in Swedish as well, since it's about Stockholm, basically. So, we have all these features in our game now, and we still do not have enough money. We're gonna have to borrow another 100,000. Because this, this is gonna take time. 
so improve all the gameplay that you can, please. And hopefully we can get this done. Because right now we are as in depth and that means we need to get out of that depth. And the only way we're gonna do that is, I mean, we owe the bank quite a lot of money. So the game really has to sell. Or the engine has to sell, by the way. Uh, either works, but... It's gonna be tricky. I mean... Okay, so someone licensed our engines, but we're, we are... We are... We don't have the money we need to. So let's borrow another hundred... Uh, another uh, 100,000 and hope that we can sustain our development. No, we do not participate. Participating in game conventions is a good way to gain fans, but you have to make sure the game you are presenting is actually a good one or it's gonna be very tricky. So. Off we go, and hopefully the improvement work will be done soon. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So, just... Just remove the bugs and make sure the bugs are all gone once the game project is actually complete. We are bleeding cash here. So it's important that we... Yeah, we got some money out of a licensed engine and that's nice, so... Eighty percent done, and more people are licensing our engines. In this case, the Dream Engine, just because they haven't actually seen what this engine can do. So, our quality assurance team is now quashing the bugs, and yeah, all bugs are gone. So we need to find a uh, publisher who is into RPG. I think we're gonna go with Hasbro's. Just short of gold, uh, 79%. I would actually say we got a good one here, but our expenses for this game has been absolutely horrible. So, but we we sold about 10,000 the first week, 23,000 next week. So we did not get the game of the year. It would have been nice if we had gotten game of the year, but right now, uh, let's just put these people to work on optimizing assets for rather once but we are selling rather well I mean we don't have that much hype and it's six weeks into the sale but we are getting money out of this this game actually I'm gonna repay as much credit as I can Let's see here, we are about, there we go, now our depths are down to a far more manageable level. And then the banking crisis hit, so I am very, very pleased that I managed to repay the last of the credits before uh, most of our banking just hit us, hit us on the head. So. These guys are going to have to test a beta version and we'll see what the end result from the game Stockholm is going to be. But right now, we are doing alright, I would say. Uh, 
And we got some more money from a uh, engine sale, meaning that we are officially back on our feet. It's kind of nice. Of course, there is one thing I do want to try, just because it would be fun. And that is develop a game. We'll make the game about assassins. We'll make it about an RPG. And let's call it as. I can't spell the word assassins for some reasons. Assassins Promise RPG. And we'll make it with the Gamla engine. And target market is going to be adults. And we'll target. The... We'll just push it on the personal computers. Uh, in order to make it more. And we're basically doing a very nasty thing here. We are copy pasting. Oh, uh, never mind. I forgot that we I forgot that it should be a B plus game. Uh, so assassins and RPG. In fact, I wonder if we what we should mix it with. Uh, I think we should mix it with let's yeah let's mix it with a platformer. An RPG platformer. And we might as well develop for the Nintendo, uh, considering it has a quite it has a 10% market share, so it's not a it's not a bad decision. Uh, and all the features are there, and we actually could pay for that game up front. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is put people on. Imp oh wait, we don't have. We don't actually have the money for people to do the fine-tuning, but we just got the money because thanks to people uh, using our engine. So, the quality assurance team is on the case. Now, what will be interesting is if, to see if people can, if our customers is going to see that this is basically just a blatant copy-paste of the previous game we made. I mean, we haven't changed, oh, and we got even more money from licensing the Dream Engine. Uh, we are making pretty good money out of that, too, so... Uh, I don't think we should be taking any developer off their task in order to... to uh, yeah. So Assassin's Promise RPG doesn't have any hype, and we even got more people licensing our engine, and that's nice, so... I'm actually thinking about cutting down a bit on the research, and instead trying to make sure that the researchers, uh, that the programmers I wonder what what ails you. This guy doesn't. I mean, he has uh, uh, something over his head, but I can't determine if there is anything actually wrong with him. So I'm just gonna assume he's fine and he's just bleeding out. Ah, uh, there's not not much else to it. We are our quality assurance team is currently hard at work, and hopefully fixing everything, or at least fine tuning stuff. Once that is done, they'll start with the bugs. So remove the bugs, and we got about fifty thousand more just from engines and. This is kind of nice, because this game is actually a bit self-sustaining, and self-sustaining games are a lot more interesting, and uh, frankly less stressful, because a bad game that you have financed with a loan is going to get you bankrupt. In almost every case. So if pe these people just hurry up with this little project of theirs, we should be good. 
So the Mad Games Awards are in and we did not get any game of the year. And some more money from licensing. This is going fairly good so far. All we're waiting for now is the last bug. Once the last bugs have been squashed, we should be able to. Yes, and we should find someone. Yeah, Blue Ocean. We have a good, good working relationship with them. Not much to complain about. Good genre combination, but apparently it wasn't as great as its sh as uh, its predecessor. But apparently it was good enough, and it sold better during the, its second week. That's pretty interesting. And its third week sales are up as well. And now the sales are dipping again. Sales are holding rather steady so far. We're making quite a lot of money on this. And now the video game boom has hit, so hopefully that will also affect our game. Yeah, it actually is. Sales are increasing. A few more weeks of this and we might actually have a nice little profit for this game. Oh, come on. I want this game to at least go even. I mean, it has, it has sold rather well, but it hasn't sold well enough. So I'm just gonna save here and we are going to quit the game and thank you for tuning in. It's been nice to have you around. Catch you later.